right, where are we today? Gone down to Thiel, uh, the day ticket lake. Uh, same place that I caught my PB from actually. It's meant to be really hot and something in my head was just telling me that Church Farm will shut down when it's hot. Whereas here, I know they really like a floater. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. Try and catch them off the top. So, fingers crossed, should be good. So, first looks, got some noisy coops, but the water's still really low. I don't know if it's been this way sort of since I was last here, but in the peg that I'm in, that I like to call the bay, the water must be down about four foot. Uh, that's meant that the weeds come up in the margins quite a lot. But, the sun's coming up. Uh, those guys have left. Sort of as I was coming in, they were leaving. And... As you can probably see there, there's fish coming up. Uh, there was a lot of seagulls, so I used some old bread that I had. Uh, I was in Morrison's the other day and they were doing almost like a little bag of four rolls uh, for 35p. I thought that was fine, uh, be a little bit sort of old by the time I got here, but for 35p that'll be enough to sort of feed off the seagulls. And they were probably about 10, but as you can see, they've all gone. So, in between the bread, uh, I've been putting some mixers out. Uh, if you've seen it on my Instagram, they're the Morrison's mixers, £1.77 for four kilograms, yes please. And um, what I did to those, I'll show you now, is I put a little bit of the dynamite Robin Red on them, to sort of spice them up a bit, and then a little bit of sunflower oil, just so the sunflower oil doesn't really change sort of the taste. But what it does is, uh, will give that oily slick. If I put hemp oil or something on it, it would slightly change the taste. But, there is a fish coming up. And where there's one, I can usually find more in here. There's two. So, let's keep feeding. There's bread out there, they'll come up and eat that. But let's keep feeding and hopefully we can have one. It's meant to be really hot by about 11, uh, but this sort of shade will hang in this bay till really about then. So, the fish just down here as well. So I'll keep feeding and fingers crossed. Let's break the blank. Surface fishing is my favorite way of fishing anyway, so let's break the blank. Let's do it guys. Right, I've switched you guys onto my chest cam. <clears throat> As you can see, the fish are still coming up and taking. I've just been putting mixers out. So about four or five at a time. And as soon as the fish started coming up, they didn't really mind the gulls still flying around. There were a couple that came back, but you know, they didn't seem to mind it to be honest. So while they've been feeding, just set up my rod. Got my Dwarf 175 today. They are quite close in, so I was uh, thinking about free lining. But I thought I'd go for my little bolt bubble. I haven't used it in a while. And, you know, it hooks really well. So with that, we've got a three foot hook link uh, down to a size eight mixer uh, barbed in here. That's just Palomar knotted on. And then for the bait, I've used the Gardener six mil bait band. Uh, sort of looped it onto the hook and then banded on a mixer. Put a bit of Vaseline on the hook link just to make it float a bit better, but hopefully, with how they're feeding out there, today should be a good day. Right, let's talk, let's get on it. Just gonna throw out a couple more mixers before I cast. Let's just hook this up.
They are right in close. Just saw one of them poke its head out. Just make sure that's floating fine. It's got a bit of that. Whatever that is on it. Take that strand of weed off. Right. Check everything. Check that mix of floats. It does. Right. Let's get out there. Going over them. Touching it before it hits. Rod up. I'm just going to reel in slowly just so I can see which one. I think my mix has come off. Oh, we're in. <laughs> Didn't see that coming so soon. I thought my mix would come off. Well, there you go, guys. <laughs> I thought my mixer would come off, but fish come up and take it. Charging around in the weed. Well, uh, towards the weed. Just turned him away from it. Just keep his head up and keep him moving. coming this way see the fish are still coming up as soon as I get him in the net I'll put a little bit more bait out keep those fish in the area there you go come on boy he's got a bit of weed around him now just gonna keep his head up keep him coming our way down a little bit. I've put the long handle on my net, the double handle, so I should be able to stretch out and get him in a sec. Stretching that out again. So much weed in the way. I oh, moved. <laughs> Touch the net. Off he went. He does not want to give up. There you go, here he comes. Over the top. And fish number one, guys. Yes. All right, the margins are just about deep enough. So while he sits, 
there. And are they? I'll just ship them out a little bit actually. There you go, deep enough there. I'm just gonna go and sort my photography stuff. There we go. Fish number one, about nine, ten pound common. Lovely off the top. That one was nailed in the scissors and just caught on just a simple little mixer. Right, let's get him back. He's wiggling quite a bit. I can see that they're still feeding out there. Get him. <clears throat> Make sure that Palomar knot's still fine. My little band is fine, and the hook point razor sharp. Ready to get it straight back out. See more hip bait. We're in. And he's running the whole length of the lake, blimey. I'm getting back. <laughs> Try not to play him too hard on this line. There is a bit of weed in the margin, but out in, the in front of me, it's just sort of silty. So I've just got eight pound line on. Close that clutch down a bit, try. Gain a bit of line back, he's swimming towards me now. Really loving this rod. I haven't played many bigger fish on it. Use it down at Ashmore. But it's my first time properly <clears throat> using it for some bigger fish. A couple of strands of weed around. Love that sound. Just see him out on the top out there. I'm not gonna say too much. Looks like a little mirror. Try and gain a bit of line on him. So walking back when he surface fishing helps quite a bit because you don't put too much strain on the line, you just walk the fish just trying to get down in this margin just trying to turn him out of here don't really want him getting in there it'd be worse if the water was up high because he'd get in all these trees down here but I've had that happen before 
I caught an 18 pound something. Look at this rod. Bending so nicely. I think it looks good fish. Bigger than the last one. This one might be worth away. And he's just kicked the weed, so I've got a bit of a clearance. Look him, it's a net him. Come on. He does look a good fish. Ooh, pinged off his dorsal. Come on, let's get your head up. It doesn't want to give up. Try and gain a bit of line on him. Come on. Let's go. He's right there. <laughs> Come on. Let's get your head up. off again. We've got him. 
blind. He didn't want to give up. Right, I'll do the same as I did to the last fish. Just leave him down in the margin there. There we go. Just so he can right himself. Put the net over him like that. Sort of camera stuff up. Check out the paddle on him, guys. <laughs> 16 pound five. Lovely mirror, I fought so hard. Man, he's so chunky. Beautiful fish in here, beautiful, I love him. Check out his tail, it's huge. Right, I'll put a, bit, put a little bit more feed out, and they're coming up again. I'm nice and greedy, so. Right, we go for a third. Brilliant, lovely, check that out. Right, it's getting back. So it's been about an hour since I caught that fish. Those seagulls hung around for about 45 minutes. I counted 25 of them. Must have been a whole bloody population of them. I can still see a few fish just cruising. Just going to start trickling the bait out again. Try and get them back in the area. See if we can't have another. But if they're not here, I'll just have a little walk around. I am the only one on it, so we'll just leave my stuff here and go and find them. Yes!
try and get him through this little alleyway I made. Keep them coming, keep them coming, keep coming. Yes. Oh, shit. Here we go, fish number three. 15 pound two. Lovely and dark. Shows the perseverance of just casting that little mixer around. Uh, when I came back, I saw a couple in the area. Thought I'd still give it a go. And they were coming up and taking now and then. And this one came up and took a single. So, yeah, very happy. A little bit of bad news is when I was just getting him in the net, the tip of my dwarf rod snapped. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to have a bit of a change of plan now because that's not a uh, immediate fix. So we'll get him back. He's wiggling quite a lot, beating me up on the bank, and we'll have a bit of a change of plan. Get him. So I'm down basically opposite where I was. I was over in the bay up here. Um, having that rod tip snap means that I've got to use my other rod. And the other rod that I've got is a bottom bait rod. It's one of my like, three and a half pound test curve rods. And the only problem is, is that not many of these fish that are sat up in the weed look like they want to feed on the bottom. I'm going to have to try and entice them down. Uh, but then also on this venue you can't use leaders. So I'm going to have to try and think of a way. Um, I've got a bit of fluorocarbon actually. I was thinking about putting a solid PVO bag in. Into these little uh, sort of shallower gaps. Because there's a really big fish right in front of us. He's the biggest of the bunch. And if anything, I'd like to target something a bit bigger now. And in this patch of weed just here, you probably can't see it. Let me try. Every little gap has just a little fish head poking out. So I've got some sweet corn that I've uh, 
It's looking all neon now. Because I put that pineapple supreme in it. So if we catch using this, then uh, thank you very much to that person that left that behind. All right, I'm going to slowly trickle some of this in. So I'm going to try and gauge your response. If they're up for it, then I'll uh, stay put. All right, let's give it a go. Two fish just come in. One quite a nice size. There's one sort of just back from the spot as well, digging down in the weed. One's just gone up, one's clocked the pop up, one's clocked the pop up, one's got it, one's got it, one's got it. Has he got it? I can't tell. I can't tell if I put him or not. Moving off with the line tight in, or right, time to go home. About half four, it's a bit of an early one, but we're off. Um, yeah, three fish that's bloody good, isn't it? Fish for each session that I've like blanked on my streak. <laughs> it's unfortunate that that uh, tip section had to snap, though. I think if that hadn't happened, we probably could have had a couple more, but that's just me being greedy. I'm buzzing with that. Right, cheers for watching, like, subscribe, all of that. Um, I'm on holiday next week in Cuba, so we might get, I don't know, some exotic type of fishing in. But if not, watch all the other videos, and we'll see you soon. In a bit, guys.